Welcome back to the channel. And if you are new here, welcome also. I'm Colette Elizabeth. And I created this channel as a safe space for Black women to have information and knowledge exchange. Today, I am, I'm just going to talk to you. I have a few notes here, but I'm just going to talk to you. There's so, 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 so much going on today in the world. So many, I don't know, so many challenging things. We have wars and I'm not going to get into this, that, and the other, but we have wars. We have uh, dissension in the U.S. in our legislative branch. Um, people just showing out. Okay. And I'm not going to get into whose politics are right and whose politics are wrong. What I'm going to talk about is the chaotic feeling that many of us are experiencing watching these various just disturbing situations that are going on in this world. I don't know about you, but I feel things and it gets heavy sometimes, and I probably will start limiting my time looking at current affairs and the news and all of that. There's just so much going on, so much to just try to figure out. And for me, sometimes that becomes really overwhelming. If you're the type of person who kind of contemplates the future, like what's going to happen. And I'm not meaning like a, ooh, I'm zoned in on it 24-7. What I mean is when you look at this, certain things are happening. And you look over here, something else is happening. And I find myself, I don't know about you, saying, what in the world is going on? Now, I've said several times on the channel, I am a Christian, I read the Bible. But I am not going to sit here and predict the end of the world and none of that stuff. I'm not going to do that. I let other people do that. And I let other people read and see what they think. Uh, but what I am going to say is at some point, we, people like me who feel, who see, and who are taking all this stuff in, and I suspect there's a bunch of people out there like me who are just questioning what in the world is going on and how do I continue to survive and thrive in a healthy way in this chaotic atmosphere that we find ourselves in, in, in a landscape that is so volatile. One day it's here and the next day it's there. And a lot of the times we get this information from the news. Now, I'm not putting the news down, news reporters, newscasters, because they're doing their jobs, most of them, okay? I'll just say most of them. You do have some people who I think are agents of chaos. They live and thrive in chaos and telling people about chaotic situations all the time. But without a balance, this can become overwhelming for some people. I know for me, like I said earlier, I probably will be limiting my, my news viewing and just viewing all kinds of things, social media, just different things. And I know that may seem weird because I do have a YouTube channel, but I think it's necessary. I think it's necessary for me to guard my ear gates and my eye gates against things that may impact, adversely impact my peace of mind. For me, I am one of those people that I try to find something humorous in most situations. And I know that that may seem weird or macabre to some people, but that's just a survival mechanism that I have developed. And then I'm naturally the type of person who laughs at things. I try to find humor, try to lighten things because if you don't, I find for me, if I don't, things can get really, really heavy, really, really quick. And I am not interested in being weighed down by things, many things that I cannot even control the outcome of. So 
Today, I am going to talk about laughing anyway. Studies show that laughter makes us more resilient, more creative, and more resourceful. Those things kind of go together, right? Because a resilient person is a person who can just bounce back. And it doesn't mean that they don't get knocked down. It doesn't mean that they don't take some time to get renewed while they're down. It doesn't mean that. It means that when things happen, they take it for what it's worth, do what needs to happen, and they move on. It doesn't mean that what happened, the situation or circumstance did not impact them. It did but it didn't stop them. Maybe it delayed them. Maybe it postponed some things. Maybe they had to pivot. But resilience is about getting up again. That's what it's about. And the great thing about resilience is it can be learned. It's a muscle. And there is something called muscle memory. So resilience is, is the ability to just get up and do what you need to do in spite of. And I am never going to tell you if you need to take a break, not to take a break. I just did a video that said, hey, take a break if you need to do it, take a break. I did a video, pivot if you need to pivot, okay? So do all the things that you need to do. When we talk about creativity, I can see how laughter can help us to be creative because as a creative person myself, I draw, I write poetry. I find that I have more space when I'm not stressed. When I am stressed out or I feel heavy or I feel a certain way, I am not as creative. Laughter helps because it lightens the load. Think about laughter as a balloon going up. It kind of lightens things. Does it fix everything? No, it doesn't. It doesn't fix everything, but it helps us. It helps us. I can see it helping us to be resourceful because being resourceful is connected to creativity, right? Resourcefulness has to do with creating something out of something else, finding a way out of no way. And I'm not saying that we're God or anything like that, but we can get direction from God. And I believe the less stressed we are, the less sad, the, mo the less burdened we are, I think the more we can hear what God is telling us in trying times as we live in today. I don't know if you all are aware, but I am in California. And uh, a few days ago, I found out we had an earthquake here. Now, I was in the big Northwich Crake in the 1990s. So, I, I know I know what being in an earthquake is about. I know how it feels. I know how uncertain it makes you uh, for some time following the earthquake. Now, the earthquake that we had a few days ago, it didn't hit the area that I live in, and it didn't hit the area that my my children live in, but it did hit the area of where some of my, my friends and, and family live, and it wasn't a big earthquake. But why did I bring that up? I brought it up because... Earthquakes, depending on the type of earthquake, you have the earthquakes where the 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 side the plates, I forgot what they're called. Somebody can put it in the comments. The plates, they 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 go like this. Okay, and, and so it causes the earth to move. Then you have the one like the Northridge quake where the plates go like this. And the point I'm making is when those quakes happen, things become unsettled and it's unsettled for a long time afterwards, depending on the size of the quake, like some of the ones that they have in India and in the different places you hear about around the world, it can become uncertain and that can be heavy. And to me, um, earthquakes are symbolic of some of the chaotic times and situations that we find ourselves in. Meaning you don't get a warning. Meaning a lot of times you're not prepared. Meaning 
You have to get out of harm's way if you can. Meaning that after that earthquake is over with, the five to 10 minutes or whatever it is, that when it's over with, meaning you have to pick yourself up and your stuff and you have to be able to move forward. That's getting back to that resilience. So what does that have to do with laughter? Laughter, um, it doesn't make those things go away, but it helps us. It helps us to have a hope, to look forward, to say, hey, this happened, but we got another day that's coming and that we're going to prepare for, okay? So laughing, it triggers the release of endorphins. Some people call that happy hormones. It's the hormone you get when you exercise, when you walk, those are endorphins. And so when we laugh, it triggers those. And it's it's great because it's it's a feeling of euphoria without any substances or alcohol, right? Our body produces it. It's a, it's a hormone. The other thing that laughter does is it suppresses. It suppresses the stress hormone or cortisol. It suppresses that. So on the one hand, it elevates our happy hormone, okay, endorphins, and it suppresses cortisol. And so that's important. Looking here, down here at my notes. The other thing that it does is it protects the heart. And I'll put my resource that I am using, I'll put it in the description box so that you can read it. There is a, a scripture in the Bible that talks about, I think it, it, I think it goes something like laughter is medicine. Let me try to find that. I had it here, but laughter is so important because we have so many things going on that can make us not laugh, make us have a lemon face. You ever see people who look like they never laugh, right? And, and that's sad because there's so many things that that we can laugh, find ourselves and laugh about. Even though at different points in our lives, different times in our lives, we may not feel, I'm still looking for that scripture. I have it here. Even though we may not feel like laughing, Sometimes just a laugh, laugh, just a, you know, a quick laugh. It can help us, okay? A Norwegian study found that people with a strong sense of humor, they tended to live longer than people who don't have such a strong sense of humor or people who don't, who don't laugh at all. Have you ever met people who just, they don't find anything funny? Everything is negative and, 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 and sad. And, and I'm not talking about this. This is different than people who are positive. I personally think that people who laugh more tend to be more positive, but I don't have any proof behind that. But I also feel like if you're not the type of person that finds humor in things naturally, I think that when you get around people like me and others who laugh at everything, you will learn the skill of laughter. I'm going to just call it a skill, okay? You will learn the skill of laughter because some people, when they're laughing, you start laughing. Now, I've been told I'm like that. I've been told that people will hear me because I laugh loud. I always have laughed loud. My grandmother, my late grandmother said that she used to take me uh, to the store when she would get off work. She was a she was uh, in the nursing field. She said when I was born, she would take me to the store with her to go grocery shopping and put me in the front of the cart, the shopping cart. And she said, I would just laugh so loud. She said people would come around from other aisles of the store to see who was this laughing. And then they would see me she said, this little baby, now I wasn't no little baby, but I was this little baby, I guess she meant a young baby, laughing so loud. So I've always laughed loud. I've always talked loud. Saying all that to say, laughter is contagious. So if you're one of these people who you can't get your laugh on, you don't know how to get your laugh on, get somebody 
who laughs and learn that skill because it will help you. It will help you. And for no, if for no other reason, you want to lose a few pounds every year. Now, I'm not talking about you're going to lose 10, 20, 30 pounds because I would be a size three if, if, you, if it worked like that. But there is a study that found that if you laugh for about 10 to 15 minutes per day, you could lose, this equates to about three to four pounds a year. Who knew? Now, I might need to I add, maybe I'll multiply that by three or four. But do you get my point? The point is we can laugh anyway. The other thing that laughter does is laughter puts distance between you and the stressful situation. Sometimes we find ourselves in stressful or conflict-filled situations. We all find ourselves sometime in those type of situations. And maybe there's situations that you, you can't control. Like I just mentioned earlier about being in an earthquake or any other natural disasters. You have uh, tornadoes, you have hurricanes, you have man-made disasters, just different situations that are stressful, that are crisis field. Maybe there's some conflict, but what laughter can do, and I'm not saying everything funny because everything is not funny, right? What I'm saying is laughter helps us in many cases to put situations in context. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been in conflict with somebody, y'all arguing, and we doing the things, maybe you talking about the person, saying they always do this, you bring out the list, we got lists, I got a list, everybody got a list. Some people don't have lists, many people have lists. You know that list that says you did this in 1972, I was six. You did this in 1986. You did that in 1999, whatever. So those lists, right? So you get these lists out because you're in conflict with the person and then somebody say something funny. You have to laugh. Like for example, if I do tell somebody, well, in 1986, you did this. The person says, oh, I'm born to 1990. How I do that? Well, you did it in utero, okay? So those type of things, that type of response, that type of comedic response can help to put distance between the situation. It can make things a little lighter, even if they're heavy, even if it's a situation where you are rightfully upset, you are rightfully angered, you are about to blow your top. Humor can help. Humor can help. I know for a fact because it has helped me a bunch of times. Uh, laughter can be a tool for strengthening relationships because it brings people together and it helps us. When you laugh, I don't care, even the most grumpy person, they'll laugh or they'll look over at you and say, okay, now the person, something wrong with that person. And that may make them laugh. That may make them smile. You can kind of see when people want to laugh and they holding it real, real, real hard. And if I see people doing that, which I have, I will say to them, now you want to laugh. You can go on and laugh. I'm not going, I'm not even going to charge you for that. Go ahead and laugh. You ain't laughed in two, three, four years. I just wanted to get on here today and talk about something that we can do. And it's free to help us in this chaotic crazy time. All right. It's a crazy, crazy time. But at the same time, it's a great time to be alive. So I don't want to make it sound like I am complaining about this time. I'm just talking about what I see, what I'm experiencing. And at the same time, I know uh, that this is a wonderful time to be alive on this earth. You hear people say for such a time as this, you don't know why you were created. Some of us, many of us don't. We don't know why we were created, why we were brought out of eternity and put into time at this time. We don't know. We don't know. Um, it's a great time 
to be alive. I think with all the crazy stuff going on, at the very least, you got jokes. And you know us, Black people, we, we make a joke out of anything. We make a joke out of it. Now with social media, we'll make a meme out of it. We probably even make a dance out of it. We'll make a dance out of anything. My nickname is Nene. My nieces and nephews call me Nene. I remember years ago, there was a dance called the Nene. Okay. So, you know, you know, Black people, we're going to make a dance. We go, we may give a barbecue to celebrate it. We may make a handshake out of it. We're going to do something to make that thing something because we know how to find joy and to find laughter in times when it would have broke a lot of people. I really think that is how some of us has, have gotten as far as we've gotten. So the scripture I was telling you about is Proverbs 17, 22, and some of you probably already knew what it was, and it talks about it. The NIV, New International Version says, hey, a cheerful heart is good medicine. And then you skip down, it says, laughter is a gift from God. I'm going to encourage you to consider laughing more when you can. Just laugh. If you can't do 10 minutes, do five. If you can't do five, do one minute. If you can't do a whole minute, do 30 seconds. Go over somewhere and just laugh. Laugh. Do that gut-wrenching laugh. I do a gut-wrenching laugh. My whole body shakes when I laugh, especially if it's something funny. If I'm reading a book, I laugh. If I look at a video and I see something funny, I laugh. I laugh at a lot of stuff. I really, really, really do. But I just want to encourage you and to let you know that we going to get through all of this stuff that's going on in this news. And depending on what part of the country you live on and or the part of the world you live in, it's a bunch of stuff. And we're connected now. So even if you're in another country, you may be impacted by something way in the other hemisphere. You know what I mean? If you're human, and all of us are human, you have feelings. If you see things, you see people harmed and hurt and you want to help or it's a lot, it's heavy. So even though it's heavy, even though this stuff is like cray cray, even though we don't know what's new going to happen, sometimes you got to laugh to keep from crying. That's an old saying. Sometimes you got to laugh to keep from crying. I challenge you when you're going through some crazy stuff, when you don't know what to do, when you don't know when things are going to change, when you don't know how to get out of a situation, I encourage you. First, I say pray. Now, read your word and pray. Then also laugh anyway. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm to recommend the video to more people so that they can too enjoy the video. I'd appreciate it if you make some comments. I read all the comments and I do respond. So until the next video, get your laugh on and we will talk.